Hi, I'm Alice, also known as Pizza for Alice, also known as Alice Gwen. Um, and I am a TikToker slash sushi chef slash social media influencer. So I've been on social media, I guess, for my whole life, but only posting like as an influencer for like three-ish years now. Um, like the way that it started was actually because everyone said I looked like Bella Thorne. And that was what I was known for, for probably my first year on social media, which was good for me because it meant I didn't have to do anything of substance. I just was lucky that I looked like Bella Thorne. I actually don't think I do. My most popular video, my most watched video, the video that sort of like made me who I am, I did a hairstyle tutorial on Sailor Moon's famous two buns hairstyle, the meatball head hairstyle, I think you guys should know it. Um, yeah, I completely just made it up, did it during lockdown, around Christmas time, and yeah, it got, I think, something like two million views now, but don't check the facts because I might be lying, <laughs> and it might only be like one. An agency actually reached out to me and they were like, hey Alice, um, would you like to partner up? And I was like, yes, I would like to partner up. Um, and it's great. Now through them, I've gotten a bunch of really good deals. Like I just signed a monthly contract where I post like one TikTok, one Instagram post and one story post a month for a specific fashion brand. And I get paid like on a contracted basis. When I signed with an agency, they were actually telling me, Alice, you're getting ripped off. Like, you're getting ripped off, that is not enough. And I was like, what? You should be getting paid, like, contracted a bigger amount for just straight away what you post. Because imagine if I did post that content and nobody even bought anything, then I posted it for free, essentially. And since then, that same brand now pays me 800 a month for one TikTok and one Instagram post and one story. And for me, that's more than I even imagined. I work 30 hours a week um, in the service industry. I am a manager <laughs> in a sushi restaurant. Um, hard to believe. I do that as well as my social media. So it's kind of like, um, some may say I live a double life. I also agree that I live a double life. It's really embarrassing when people recognize me at work, but I don't really mind it. So yesterday, um, I went to H&M headquarters on Oxford Street because they like invited me for like a private gifting opportunity, which is crazy. It's like basically a private shopping experience, but I don't pay. So I literally, I went home with all of this stuff, like just for like casual, um, like not even like advertising, so to say, um, just to like wear it and people ask me, oh, where did you get this? And I can be like, oh, I got it from H&M. But it's not like a paid promo, so it's not like, you know, oh, hashtag ad. Like I went up and the whole room was like laid out for me. And they were like, do you want anything? Can I get you a coffee? Can I get you a drink? Like just choose whatever you like, pick the size. Like, I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know how these things work. So I was just walking around, like picking stuff up and then going into like this huge changing room and trying everything on. I live with my mom and my brother, like half of the time, my brother sort of comes and goes. Um, um, I'm really close with both of them, honestly. My mom is like my best friend. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> she's gonna watch this and she's gonna be like, oh my God. So when Alice was a baby, she was born prematurely, so I didn't get to hold her for 10 days in Hong Kong, and uh, I was told that she might be a bit behind in keeping up with her peers, blah, blah, blah. Wasn't the case at all. She started talking really early and singing really early. She uh, used to wake up singing. She never cried when she was a baby. Um, People used to always approach her, especially in Hong Kong, because they never used to see really young babies before the age of one, apparently. 
and uh, so to see a baby, a really young baby was good luck and they would touch her all the time. People on the metro would touch her all the time and uh, wish her good luck. So that was really sweet. Oh, climbing poses. That's such a cute dress. Why were I so I was stylish with you. Look how high you got. Oh my you're God, only no, about actually, two. No, you were fearless. That's really hard. You were fearless, you didn't care. Uh, I started modelling at 21, so I was a bit older than she is now. Uh, before that, I was a rock chick, goth, so I did all that. So I, used, I was used to getting a lot of attention. Um, hung out with a few rock stars back in the day, and I just by accident fell into modelling and just did that for the next 12 years until I had Alice. Yeah, I mean, I never ever uh, had any expectations for what Alice should or shouldn't be when she was grown up. I always thought she should follow her own path. And as long as it was something that made her happy, didn't hurt anybody, I was more than happy for her to do what she's doing now, absolutely. Or anything else that she might have chosen instead. So I'm very proud of her. Right now, I wouldn't say I make enough to financially support myself as much as I would want, but I sort of have, like just from social media, I sort of have an idea in my mind where if I start making monthly and as much on social media as I do from my job, obviously I much prefer to be here making videos, taking pictures, editing content, trying cool outfits, doing all of this stuff. I much prefer that than rolling some rice, cutting some fish, you know. Social media is very weird, to say the least. I mean, I get, like, on average, I would say probably at least three weird DMs or comments a day. I'm lucky in the sense that I don't get a huge amount of hate comments, but that sort of really makes it worse, like, when I do get one, because it's not, like, com well, it's not completely common. So like when I do get it, like it's in my mind the whole day and I'm like, oh, like this one guy, I remember he wrote like a big essay about why like women are like useless and like can't get a proper job in these days. They're just like influencers and all of this. And like he literally just wrote this whole thing. He was like, being an influencer is not a job. Smiling in front of a camera with your boobs out is not a job. These days I'm like, those type of misogynistic comments, they don't really affect me. I think just because I myself know how much effort goes into the things that I do. Um, I, I trust myself, I trust my work, and like that doesn't really affect me. She's on the social media that anyone can access. When I was doing the shows I was doing, invite only, press only, you, you know, nobody could troll you, you weren't gonna get messages, and there's no, we didn't even have mobile phones. So there was none of that going on, so it's really different. And I do worry about the social media and the fact that Anyone can send anything they want and you're going to see it. That bothers me. At the time, I had only like 1,000 followers on Instagram. <clears throat> but his account, he was using my pictures and he was like growing that account, pretending to be me as a porn star. And I was 17. Um, like the account, got 40,000 followers and I had only 1,000 followers at the time so people's genuine impression of me was that I was a porn star and I was 17 and I was still at school and like for some reason there were some people out there that didn't believe me and they thought I was trying to become like social media famous by being a porn star and like OnlyFans stuff. Yeah it was it was really rough I had to um, sort of despite everything, I was still trying to post um, and do the stuff that I wanted to do on social media, but I couldn't break away for a while from this sort of um, assumption and image that I was literally like a porn star and an OnlyFans girl. The days that I don't feel like filming, um, most of the time I will still have to because you know I'll have work the next day and I won't be able to actually do anything that day other than go to work so I find myself sometimes like dragging myself out of bed putting my makeup on 
and filming a video even when I really, I don't want to. Even on those days, I feel pressure to still post. I need to wipe my lens, TBH. No, it's fine, it's literally just the lighting. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh my god, don't you see it all the way up? Oh, Jesus. Can we take it? Can we? <laughs> <laughs> Relevancy is something that you need to stay on top on. Like, I do feel a lot of pressure to make sure I'm still posting, you know. Um, one time I didn't post for two weeks because I literally had COVID and I lost 400 followers. Honestly, I kind of knew early on, like literally my whole life, I never wanted to have an office job. The dreams that I always had growing up were like singer, actor, performer, all of this. I love the creative industry. I can't see myself not in the creative industry. But I also love to be my own boss in a sense. And I feel like social media is a really, really cool way to like be yourself, manage yourself and put out whatever you want to put out. Yeah, I just love to be creative and this is the best thing to do. I mean, come on, I am my own boss, like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs>